Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. How you doing, William? We're going to give everybody a chance to uh, come in and join us. And then we'll get started. Hello, Leanne. Hey, David. Hey, Jimmy. We're going to give a few minutes, uh, let everybody get in, and um, we'll get started here in a moment. Uh not a new sign it's just a small banner that I have um, David uh, just a it was kind of a preprint uh, before I get my big uh, 8 foot by 10 foot uh, print in for my backdrop for my new shop <laughs> but uh, just a uh, small uh, banner that I've just got hanging up It was a test print. Yeah, it's uh, it's cool. I, we um, uh, finalized the graphics and everything a long time ago, and uh, now I just gotta still got some work to do. I've got to get the SpindleTV.com website up and um, uh, some other items uh, on the spindletv.com website will have uh, items for download and, and different things and it'll be uh, it'll be interesting gotta get that uh, training page on digitalwoodcarver.com up to date and still gotta get some of those past class videos uh, on this uh, spindle tv channel get them posted and all but it's um proving more difficult than anything it's almost like I'm gonna have to reshoot them that Webex uh, video quality is horrific from our first first classes back when we were using the Webex classroom all right so tonight's class we're gonna be talking about distorting text uh, and objects and things for uh, things like uh, 3d books uh, flags, banners, or anything like that. Uh, just uh, how would we, how do we distort that? What's a what's a quick and simple way to distort the text, and also to be able to follow the contour of those waves and in the banners, in the book pages, in the flags and stuff uh, to be able to carve them. Uh, there's nothing new in here as far as. Um, We've, uh, you know, talked about in the past distorting text onto 3D models, or, or should I say the proper term, projecting uh, text onto 3D models. But uh, I'm going to show some tips and things on how to uh, take full advantage of the distort tool uh, and um, use some of the models that are in our 
our clip art. We're going to use a model out of our clip art, a couple of models and stuff, and we're going to talk about that. It's going to be a very short class. It's going to be about an hour long. Uh, then we can uh, open up for questions and stuff at the end. Uh, but uh, this, uh, this, this training uh, won't take very long. So we might as well uh, jump in and get started. So let's go ahead and switch over to our Vetrix software. And in the Vetrix software, we're going to be creating a new file. Now, this uh, what I'm what I'm going to be doing uh, can be done in your VCarve uh, products, VCarve Desktop and Pro, as well as Aspire. Um, so uh, it's applicable to all of the Vetrix programs. Uh, this is going to be a single-sided job for this tutorial. Uh, we're going to go with a 12-inch wide by 8-inch. 12 inch long let's call it by 8 inch uh, tall board uh, that is going to be uh, 3 quarters of an inch thick now uh, for any of you that are new uh, the width uh, the word width here with X is basically trying to orientate you to your computer screen the width of your computer screen from left to right represents the X axis on your CNC machine the height of the computer screen up and down represents the y-axis so when I say things like 12 inches long um, what I'm meaning is my board is 12 inches long it's 8 inches wide and that length is running along my x-axis so I don't want you to get the word long when I say 12 inches long I don't want you to get that confused with the word that you see on the screen that says width because this is just referring to the width of the computer screen representing the x-axis on the CNC. All right, so uh, we are going to be uh, working off the material surface for our Z0 position. And we are going to uh, work off the center for this project. Uh, we can work off the bottom left corner as well, but I'm going to work off the center for this one. And uh, hello, Ford. How are you doing? Peter, welcome. Uh, and um, so... Uh, we're going to go ahead and click OK, and we'll get into that. Now, when it comes to distorting objects, uh, when we use the distort tool, um, the object, it really kind of converts it. Like, let's talk about text for a moment. Uh, when, when we distort text, uh, it, it's no longer a text object. It's technically no longer a vector. I mean, it's a vector object as far as uh, that goes, but it's it's more considered an envelope uh, because we can't edit, uh, you know, the text spacing and curve and things like that, or the font and stuff. Uh, once we can, once we distort it, um, even uh, when we convert text to a curve, we can still manipulate its nodes. Uh, we can, you know, uh, select on each of the individual letters of the vector, should I say, and, uh, you know, space them out or move them around. Well, when we distort, use the distort tool in the transform objects, it, it turns it into a whole different beast, uh, kind of making it one envelope type object. And you'll see what I mean here in just a minute. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our clip art gallery of our software and we're going to... Uh, go into the objects and people folder of our clip art and in one of those objects is called an open book and we have things like open book we've got a scroll here so uh, we're gonna look at the open book first and then we're gonna look at uh, a banner or ribbon you know we'll look at a banner and ribbon here in a moment as well um, but we're gonna start off with the open book uh, the open book is one of my, it, it's a favorite of mine. I really like the way it looks uh, in the uh, 3D view and things uh, as far as a model goes. Uh, the nice curvature, the, the curling of the pages and things, and, and you know, just, you know, that, that look of an open book laying up. And I really like it a, a lot. Um, and I want to talk to you guys about distorting text and laying it out and things. So the first thing I'm going to do now that I have the book in my drawing area is while I'm in transform mode, I'm going to grab one of these corner boxes here and hold my shift key down to keep it centered. And I'm going to scale it up. Um, and not that big. I'm going to scale it up, leave a little bit of room around my edges and things. 
Let's go a little bit bigger. Mm. Yeah, probably right about there. <clears throat> All right. And one of the things that you'll ever notice, if you ever notice that um, when you have a model in your uh, drawing area, your 2D view, when that model is deselected, it's kind of grayed out. Until you select it, then it comes up. Well, I want to be able to distort my text and uh, be able to see the model, the curvature of the pages and things. But when I'm clicked off of it using my text, it grays out. So what I can do is I can right click on my model um, and I can go to the object properties. And that uh, allows me to uh, adjust the bitmap properties of the model. And I can turn the fading of the non-selected bitmap, you know, the fading of the model, I can turn that off pretty much. Uh, and I'll, you know, 8%, 3%, 0%, I can turn it off. So now when I'm deselected on my model, it still stays nice and highlighted basically no matter what i'm working on i can see the curvature of the model much more clear than when it's grayed out and that might not be a tool that you guys know about or an option that you know about uh, when you're working you know with models and things um, and you go to click off that model and it kind of grays out and you're like shoot where, where are my outlines and stuff well, if you, you know, on that model, if you right click and you can adjust the object's properties by turning that fading down. You know, if I have it in the standard fading, it looks something like that. When it's not selected, I want to slide that down so I can see it completely. All right, so now that I have my model in here, I'm going to go into my drawing tools and I'm going to. I've got two pages here uh, for the book and you know typically with books you're gonna have things like uh, it could be your your favorite poem it could be uh, you know a scripture you know a Bible scripture or something it could be uh, you know a storyline of a uh, you know of a favorite book you know whatever it may be and in my case uh, it's uh, it's this would be if I were laying it out uh, today for a project uh, it would be a children's book uh, that I would carve out uh, for, uh, you know, uh, a kid's bedroom or something. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off, and this is typically how you would start off with uh, anything that you're distorting, is uh, we're going to create a boundary. And in my case, we have two boundaries. We have the left page and the right page of the book. If it was a banner, then it would be the boundary kind of around that banner area. If it was a flag, it would be a boundary around that, you know, the, that, the, 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 the flag itself, the, the, the border and stuff. And so what I'm doing basically with the rectangle tool is I'm going to kind of start here at the top of the book, a little bit above the top of the book, and right down the middle line, and I'm going to draw a rectangle here. Um, and this is going to give me a border. Uh, to keep my text within in things and so not only am I going to be able to uh, kind of restrict my text to this area using the draw text within a vector box option uh, but it also gives me the border for my distorting when we open the distort tool we have the option to distort with a bounding box you know our object and things and we're going to be utilizing that here in just a moment and so uh, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take and I want to mirror this um, for the other page as well and so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I can open up the mirror tool and I can flip it about the job center and just flip it horizontally creating that mirror copy so that's one way to do it, to create that mirror copy. Um, the second way of doing it is when I have an object uh, selected, I can use my Control Shift key and hit the letter H for horizontal. 
right? The letter H for horizontal, V for vertical, and I'm going horizontal, you know, from left to right. So there's a couple of ways to, to, to mirror that, that selected object. One is with the keyboard shortcuts. In this case, uh, the shift key um, flips me about the center line of the job, the board side, the board. Uh, and the control key creates the copy. And then the letter H is for horizontal. And um, thank you, Glenn Jones. Um, the, so that, um, that's the keyboard shortcut. It would be, in my case, the control shift with the letter H to do that. Or just very simply in your transform object tools, open the mirror tool and uh, use the tools in the mirror tool. All right, so I'm gonna start off with the uh, left page and uh, we're gonna open up the draw text within a vector box. And so with that open, I can go ahead and type in the text. Now, for this book, uh, I chose um, a uh, book by Carol Moore, um, The Little Gingerbread Man, uh, for this kid's book. And so the, the title, I'm gonna kind of throw that on the left-hand side. So we'll go The Little Gingerbread Man. And um, I want the alignment, the text alignment to be left. I want uh, the margins to be set to none. And then of course the dimensions, the bounding box dimensions are gonna be based off the selected vector that I have. Uh, your font, you know, whatever font you choose uh, to use, I'm gonna use a font called Lucetta Bright uh, for this. And so I'm going to click apply and put that in there. Now, we can also uh, bring this to center, hit center here and kind of center the little, you know, above the gingerbread man. We can do that as well instead of that left justified, right? Because it's kind of a title. So we'll do that. And um, the with that, I can go ahead and um, close that tool. Now I can select my right side here and I can open that draw text within a vector box option again. And I have some text uh, from the book. Uh, so let me grab that text and come over here and paste that in. <clears throat> now with that pasted, I do want to kind of left justify this one. Uh, and uh, again, um, my margins uh, are none and my bounding box dimension is that rectangular shape there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click apply uh, to put that uh, text in there. So now we basically have just got the, uh, have gotten the text uh, laid out and stuff. Well, now we have to distort it and kind of lay it out. Um, the first part of this of getting it to kind of flow with the curve of the pages or the flag or the banner is going through the distorting phase. And then of course, we actually want it to follow the curve on the actual model when we carve it. So we'll be projecting that 2D toolpath onto the 3D model. And you'll see that here uh, as we come up. Let's start with uh, closing uh, this tool. And let's start with the left side page and so I'm going to select my boundary as well as my text and I'm going to open my distort tool and I want to make sure that I'm distorting uh, using a bounding box and I'm going to click apply okay so now that has distorted the text to that box but you it looks like nothing has happened correct well, what we wanna do is we're now going to do some, this is called an envelope. So think of, think of my bounding box as an envelope and think of my text inside of that envelope. Whatever I curl this box to, whatever I do with this box, the text is gonna kind of contour to that shape. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna transform my object. And when I transform my object, I, as I select on here, I can, um, let's first edit our envelope. Bear with me a second. 
transform. Okay. So now I can come in and um, on each of the four lines here, uh, even, even the fourth line here, I'm going to kind of uh, right click and I want to, uh, I mean, there's two ways to do this and I'm trying not to make it confusing is uh, I need to kind of go into some node editing. Uh, so if I go into node edit mode, then on this line here, if I put my mouse over that line and hit the letter B, I can convert it to a Bezier curve. Uh, same thing with this line. If I put my mouse and hit the letter B, I can convert that to a Bezier curve as well as this one here. Uh, put my mouse right on the line, hit the letter B and turn it to a Bezier curve. Um, this way, uh, it will allow me to, and I, I really should do the last line as well. So we'll do a busy a curve on that one as well. Now, what this will allow me to do is I can now bring in my box and kind of start forming it to the shape of the book page. So I can start to conform the lines. And I want to bring the edge in here. I don't want the letters going right into the center or the seam of this book. So I'm going to bring this in and kind of create a little bit of a, I don't know what you would call it, a margin or some sort of uh, a sense. So I'm going to bring this up and kind of create some spacing. And notice as I'm moving things around, uh, notice that my text is conforming uh, to that envelope, that, that box area and all. So I'm going to, uh, grab my arms here and what I'm trying to do is create a, I don't want to go right up to the edges of the page I want to create a little bit of a margin around the page and that's why uh, turning that shading that that fading off so I can see the model so I can see the curvature of the pages that's why it's so helpful so um, because uh, when that model is deselected I still want to be able to see those curvatures and things uh, so I can distort my envelope and let me see if I can get that curve to follow a little bit better uh, Let's see here. I want a nice even Spacing To follow that curve around uh, Here let's pull this down a little bit towards the bottom of the page <clears throat> and uh, let's kind of I didn't want to pull it down that far towards the bottom. I said I wanted to leave a margin right about there. Oops. I'll get it here in a minute. Right about there. Looks good. Okay. Now I can um, go ahead and kind of adjust this line over here. Get that nice curvature going. Uh, let's bring it back just a hair. Now these anchors that I'm grabbing, these anchors are allowing me to control the lines of the vectors. Now, if you're new, let's talk about uh, something here for a minute. And I've created a glossary of terms for you guys. I'm gonna post that up in the Digital Woodcarver uh, <clears throat> Facebook page uh, soon. I'm trying to uh, make it a little bit just fine, but a vector is a line, arc, or curve uh, between two points. And the points uh, that create the path that the vector will follow are considered nodes. And so between my nodes here, um, I have in this case a Bezier curve um, and those the, the line between the those two points could be a curve, a straight line, an arc. And so that line is a vector and then the vector's uh, object is consisted of various points along creating a path for that vector to follow. So if you ever hear the term vector and you're kind of wondering what a vector is, um, it is a line between two points and the points are also referred to as nodes uh, and that uh, create a path for the vector to follow. All right, so I'm gonna pull this up a little bit into this corner. There we go. And I'm going to pull this down a little bit. 
and I'm gonna keep that straight edge on this side, uh, but I do want that margin. Let's get, let's pull this up on a little bit of a curvature here. All right, very good. Okay, so I'm done with this. So this is going to be my um, my title page over here on the left. So you can see how by distorting that, it has uh, come in and um, uh, created. Now the within the edit envelope uh, this allows me to edit my envelope without going into node editing mode like I did because it uses uh, the standard node editing option to modify or distort the envelope that 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 boundary uh, but you saw me earlier right click and kind of go into node editing mode um, and I didn't need to do that. All I needed to do was uh, choose the option to edit the envelope and then I, it would have automatically had me in a node editing mode type of um, uh, file. And we'll do that for the right side. So let's go ahead and bake that distortion uh, in there so it's done and then we can close that tool. Now once that's done, I can go ahead and get rid of my boundary that boundary there, I can delete that out, and now I've got my text to you know conform and stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and do the same thing with our uh, text on the right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select the text and select the boundary. We're going to go back into the distort, and we're going to choose the bounding box and click apply to lock that in to distort it to that bounding box. Now it's kind of inside of that envelope. And now in, I'm in the edit envelope uh, option here. And so it's basically a node editing function. And so all I have to do is, now earlier you saw me put my mouse on the line and hit the letter B key to turn that into a Bezier curve. Well, if I right click on the line, I can choose the option, Bezier arc, you know, insert a point. And notice the shortcut, the keyboard shortcut is the letter B. And so that's why when I put my mouse on the line and hit the letter B, it converted it to that Bezier curve because that's the keyboard shortcut. But I can right click and then choose that as well, either one. And so I'll right click on this one and choose Bezier curve as well. And as also on this line over here. Okay, so now just uh, basically rinse and repeat as you saw me do a moment ago. The first thing I'm going to do is on my left side, I'm going to kind of create my margin away from the, you know, the center uh, margin area of that book uh, from the bottom and the top. And let's bring this, I don't mind if it goes into it just a little bit. And if you want, if you need to zoom in to, you know, get your point to wherever you uh, need to, you know, that's fine. Do that. Uh, definitely uh, zoom in. So let's pull this right about there. All right. So that'll take care of my left side. Now I can go ahead and focus on getting my corner points where I want them. So I'll grab my corner points and get them where I want them on this page. And then I can start to kind of shape or contour these Bezier curves to follow the curvature of the book. And so uh, this anchor here is connected to this node, uh, this corner node. So I can go ahead and pull that around. And down here, let's go ahead and kind of pull this one up a little bit it's got that kind of wave to it and I'd like to have that wave uh, in my page as well you know that distortion I want it to look like it's literally uh, laying on this page so I want to do my best uh, to follow this wave the best that I can um, so let's see if I can oops I'm going to undo that, control Z. I want to put that back where it was. And I meant to just only select this line here to get this curve there. All right. So I think I'm happy with that. 
Uh, I'd like to see a little bit more curl up here into this uh, point. So I'm going to grab this one and just kind of go straight up with it a little bit just to get a little bit more curvature. And I'll bring this one down and in a little. There we go. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and um, make sure that uh, everything is good there. Uh, yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to bake that uh, distortion. And now I can close that tool. And once again, I can go ahead and get rid of uh, that uh, bounding box, you know, to create that uh, curvature and stuff. So <clears throat> the principle of uh, distorting, whether it be distorting on uh, a book, distorting on a flag, or distorting on a banner, uh, it's the same steps. Everything you just saw, we, we created our boundary kind of outlining the area that we want to uh, create our object in, our text or whatever it may be. Uh, we write our text and, and restrict it to that using the draw text tool. Um, once we do that, then we can just select that text in that border and distort it. And you'll have to uh, forgive me a moment. Hey, Eric, uh, I'm, a, I'm teaching a class right now live, so I'll call you back in a moment. Thank you for calling Digital with Carmen. All right. So um, the... Uh, once we distort the um, the object, get it kind of you know uh, converted in that bounding box, then we can go into that uh, edit the envelope basically and, and convert the nodes and follow the curves. And this would apply if we had a big long wavy flag or whatever it would be, whatever whatever shape it is you're trying to follow. And what I'm going for here is I want that text to look like it's literally folding on that page, and and, and I think it's achieved it with the way it's laid out now. It's got that really nice curvature look. Um, so uh, now for this project, we're literally ready to go over and create the tool pass. And so uh, for this, uh, I'm going to create a 3D rough and 3D finish cut for my 3D model. And then we'll create our V-carve tool path for the text. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna look at my model and my material is three quarters of an inch thick. My model thickness is a little under five eighths, uh, which is good. I don't need to scale it down or anything for that. I, I like a nice looking kind of big book. So uh, with that, I'm gonna I'm happy with it. I don't need to change anything. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click OK, and I'm going to create. Uh, because of the thickness, I'm gonna go ahead and create a 3D rough cut first to kind of hog out any waste material that may uh, you know, be there. And I wanna use, because I'm gonna cut, end up cutting this book out uh, completely. Uh, so I'm gonna just use the model as the boundary. And I'm gonna be using my quarter inch end mill that's already default selected. Now, if you didn't, if, if your tool wasn't correct, you would hit select, of course, so you would go into your tool database and choose the appropriate tool, whether you have one of the bit set tools or, or something. I'm using my generic quarter inch end mill and uh, it's already defaulted from the last 3D rough cut that I created. Now, I am going to leave a little bit of an allowance uh, to uh, keep the rough cut away from my model cut. I'm going to leave a little bit of an allowance of material above my finished depth so that my finishing cut will, will, will clean up that last little bit. Now, most likely, and grain selection is very important here, I do not want to board with a lot of grain that because my text, as you can tell, it, look how small it is, right? It's going to be very detailed. It's not going to be a very, you know, in-depth, uh, you know, a uh, lot of depth in there, a lot of definition. So I do not want a board that is that the grain is just going to completely distract from the carving or uh, make it even harder, 
you know, to read or anything like that. So grain selection on your board is important for a project like this. And so I'm going to be carving, my grain will be running along my x-axis, along that 12 inch length. I will be carving along the, running along the grain. Um, and so uh, I'm going to be rastering along that x-axis. If my grain was running along the y-axis on my board, then I would raster along that y. But I'm going to raster along the x-axis and um, we're going to just go ahead and calculate this toolpath. And I'm going to call this my book uh, model because we are going to look at a, um, uh, a banner and stuff. So we're going to calculate this uh, for the book model, the rough cut. <clears throat> and so you can see there's not a whole lot of material going to be removed from here. So if we preview uh, this toolpath, um, you know, just mostly the outer edges where it drops down for those pages of the book and thing are going to be carved out of there. So there's my rough cut. So now I can go ahead and close the preview and go into my finish cut. And for the finish cut, uh, this there, there's not a whole lot of detail to this. So I can use a larger diameter ball nose, uh, but I do I don't want uh, I, I would like these pages the outer edges of the pages to be defined. So I am going to just stick with my eighth inch tapered ball nose. Now notice, uh, this is a very uh, common misconception or misunderstanding. You see how it says ball nose here, 0.125, and I just said I'm using my eighth inch ball nose. Well, I'm using my eighth inch tapered ball nose. This is a straight ball nose here. So I need to go in and I need to select my eighth inch tapered ball nose, which is hiding from me at the moment. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Where is it at? Right. Where is my tapered ball nose? Oh, I'm in the wrong bit set. Never mind. Uh, I was in a different bit set. Bear with me a second here. Tapered ball nose. Right there it is. Okay. And that's very important because that tapered ball nose is not a straight. So it's going to be, if you, if you were using your tapered ball nose, but you had your straight ball nose chosen, you know, just that generic ball nose 0.125, then the carving is going to be completely different uh, because it would carve differently based on that straight bit versus that angled tapered bit. And... Um, with if I was using my tapered ball nose, but the toolpath was calculated for a straight bit, then I'm going to get kind of a distorted look. So you always want to make sure you're using the correct bit for what you've calculated, or you want to calculate your toolpath with the bit that you're going to use. You know, so be sure you just be mindful of that. So let's click OK, and uh, again, I'm going to be using the model as a boundary, uh, and I'm going to be rastering. Now on this, I don't have the option of raster X or raster Y. I have a raster angle. Raster angle of zero means I'm rastering along my X axis back and forth. And the raster, the term raster is a linear cut back and forth, uh, whether it's uh, linear along the Y axis or along the X axis. And so it's kind of think of a printer when it's printing a document back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. An offset toolpath starts in the middle of a general area and like a spiral it offsets wider and wider and wider and wider and wider until the whole object is carved or model is carved and for me uh, with any model you never want to offset uh, in my opinion because you're going with the grain against the grain with the grain against the grain with the grain against the grain and therefore uh, it's causing it's creating more uh, of a requirement for you to do additional cleanup after the carving uh, versus if we would have just carved with the grain to begin with. So we're going to be rastering uh, with a zero angle. If I was rastering along the Y, then that angle would be 90. So we're going to raster zero angle, and this is going to be my um, book model finish. And I'll just calculate that. It'll take a second to uh, calculate that. Uh, but like I said, I mean, I, I probably could have gotten away with a quarter inch ball nose, you know, this. But uh, those step downs and things on those pages, 
and all. I want them to be nicely defined, and I believe my eighth inch ball nose will do better uh, in, a, in those radiuses than my quarter inch will. And heck, if I wanted to spend the time, my 16th uh, would do even better, you know, as far as defining those pages and things. Um, but an eighth inch is going to be suffice for this. All right, so as it finishes up, uh, that we can go ahead and preview uh, that final uh, selected toolpath. And I believe I've got my uh, toolpath set to very high. And I want to take a close look at this because um, I can already see that my eighth inch bit uh, is doing a decent job, decent job of defining uh, those pages. But let's kind of come in and take a closer look here. Uh, my toolpath menu up here, my preview simulation quality is set to standard. So I want to, I want to kind of get a good representation of what my cut's going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose an extremely high option. Now what that's going to require is that I run that toolpath again. And it's going to take a little bit longer to generate the toolpath. But... Uh, it's going to give me a better simulation quality because we're working with over 4 million pixels in this preview. Uh, it's going to give me a better simulation quality so I can, because what I'm concerned about uh, or focusing my attention on, not necessarily a concern, but more of a focusing my attention on, is the areas here on these pages. And now with that higher pixel resolution, I can see the tool marks much clearer uh, than in the standard view. I could see them in the standard view, but I can see them much clearer. And what this is going to tell me is, is um, the radius of my eighth inch bit is just a little bit uh, big, and you can see that by the tool marks that it's creating or leaving in this design uh, here on these outer edges. And that's where it's going to be focusing. As far as the flat pages, there's not going to be uh, you know anything. Now, uh, these tool marks, is it something that I want to spend the time sanding, you know, to kind of uh, clean them up a little bit? Uh, is it, uh, some, are, are they going to be, uh, you know, are, are they really going to be that bad? Is it something that uh, really will not be seen very, uh, you know, much? Um, is it going to, you know, be something if I'm, am I going to be anal about it? And, um, you know, say, you know, I, w I don't want to sand it. I want it to look sharp and crisp. Uh, if I really wanted to look real sharp and crisp, I'd, I'd use a 32nd inch ball nose, but then that would just be a forever carving type thing. Um, I'm going to let it go uh, because it's not that bad. It, it, I mean, it's not going to be as bad. The software dr dramatizes it quite a bit, but um, if I did go back and recalculate this with my 16th inch ball nose, I'd have a much, much cleaner look. So we don't need to see the uh, preview again um, and, uh, you know, take the time. But I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. Uh, and I'm going to go back to the setting uh, for time's sake. I'm going to go back to the setting of a standard setting. Uh, and I'm going to preview that so it's much faster uh, and, and everything uh, just so I can preview my text, you know, when I carve it. I still want my model carved. Uh, but I want to be able to see my text and you'll see that it's producing that 3d rendering much quicker in a standard view and I can still see my tool marks here but the pixelation in this preview is really not giving me an accurate representation of what my model is going to look like uh, if I was in a higher resolution you know, then I'm going to get a much more accurate representation. But this is good enough for uh, the preview of what we're doing. So with that, uh, there's um, two things that I need to do remaining with, with regards to the model. Is The first thing I need to do is I need to jump back over here into my modeling tab for a moment. And I need to select my open book and I need to create a vector boundary around that component. Um, what that boundary is going to uh, provide me is a vector that I can select for my profile cut because remember I'm cutting this out uh, completely. 
So uh, I will go ahead and with that selected, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create that uh, profile cut. Uh, for this, I do have these little pages in here and my quarter inch end mill wouldn't really get them that crisp and stuff. So I'm actually going to use my eighth inch end mill to profile cut this out. So I will be cutting through my three quarter inch material. Um, I will be using my eighth inch end mill. and uh, I will be cutting on the outside of the line. Now, I don't mind that it's 12 passes. Uh, you know, I've got my end mill set for a 16th of an inch per pass, uh, my eighth inch end mill, 50% the diameter of the bit or less, you know, is recommended. Uh, so it's gonna take 12 passes, that's fine. Um, I am, however, going to add a ramp to this so that and it's gonna be a spiral ramp so that it creates a nice, clean cut as it goes around it's going to slowly be dropping down as it goes around and around and create a nice clean cut i won't have any uh, witness marks or tool marks and things now because of that spiral ramp i do need to edit my tool and i need to set the uh, plunge rate to match the feed rate that's the only time you the plunge rate and the feed rate are going to uh, be the same is if you're doing a ramp uh, and especially a spiral ramp on a, a profile cut. All right, so with those settings, uh, this is going to be my book model profile. All right, so let's calculate that. And uh, we can go ahead and preview that. Now, I didn't add tabs. You guys know me. I don't add tabs because I like to be able to, to remove that waste material so you can see the model uh, you know, cut in its entirety. And it just makes an awesome, you know, project and, and things, you know, that open book. Uh, but uh, of course, before I cut this, I would be adding tabs uh, to uh, this project. And my tabs would be about a little under a quarter of an inch wide, uh, a little under an eighth of an inch thick. And I would click on edit tabs. And on the straight edges, staying away from my curved edges, I'm just going to add uh, three tabs on this side, three tabs on this side, one tab down here, and one tab here. I, uh, um, I'm gonna stay away from from the curves. I'm, these are gonna be enough tabs to hold my part in. So then I would recalculate that toolpath with the tabs, you know, before I carve. Now, of course, this is the book. We got to get the text going on here. So with my text, uh, we're going to um, come in. Let's turn that toolpath off. We're going to select all of the text. And I want to make sure that nothing else is selected, not my boundary, none of that stuff. And I'm going to create a V-carved toolpath. Now, it's very important um, that when we are con uh, projecting a 2D vector, no matter what it is, whether it's a shape or text or anything, when we're taking a 2D vector and working on the same project of a 3D model, we have to project that 2D vector onto the 3D model with this option here. But it's important that we start have a start depth of zero because uh, it takes the original start depth um, let me turn the projection off so I can better illustrate this. I'm going to calculate this toolpath as it is, uh, this, this uh, V-carve toolpath. And if I, you can see here that um, my text is basically, if I kind of come in here, you can literally see underneath it uh, because it's starting from zero, calculating down to the depth of cut that it would normally cut uh, with that V-bit, but it's not conforming to my book model. You can see that open gap and everything. So I can better illustrate this by running it. So if I preview this toolpath, you would absolutely see nothing. It, it carves uh, nothing because it, you know it's it, there's no zero. So in that toolpath, when I project it, it takes that zero start depth and it brings it down till it finds the model and then it starts the, from the zero point of that model surface. And then it, it conforms to that shape. So we want to have a zero start depth. 
I do want to use a 60 degree V bit for this, so I'm going to use my white side 1541 uh, 60 degree V bit that looks like a sharpened pencil. And uh, it's right here. And uh, I want to project that mod that that toolpath onto the 3D model. So uh, this is going to be my book model text. And uh, I can even throw in the V carve if I want to text V carve and calculate that. <clears throat> so now as it calculates that now uh, once it throws it up here now if we turn this on its side we can actually go down the X axis here. Uh, looking oops, the Y axis should I say looking down the Y axis along my book uh, we can see that that toolpath contours to the model and everything so it, it follows that contours to that model and that's what we want so let's go ahead and um, preview this uh, toolpath all right now notice that the uh, text on the right is very light um, one because I'm in a standard view uh, and the quality is very very pixelated this looks uh, it's, it's very hard to determine what this is gonna look like because it's super pixelated right now um, I, I, I would like to take a moment and uh, change my simulation I'll go with a Oh, let's go with extremely high. Let it reset. Let's preview uh, the model cut and the V carb text, and let's preview those visible toolpaths and let it run out. And while it's running out, let's answer some questions. Uh, that way, we're not wasting some dead time and stuff. So, um, David Kinsey has a very good question. Uh, a lot of people, it's a very uh, misconception with that. Uh, he asked the question, does it make a difference your image shows the grain going against your grain? No, David, this is just a preview simulation. And in our software, while this is calculating, I will open up another instance of VCarve so we can actually talk about this. Um, in our software, in our application data folder, uh, we have our textures, our bitmap textures. And in the wood section, we have all of the wood that pictures that are used in that 3D simulation. And so the way the picture is orientated, you know, the grain and everything, is the way it's going to show in that 3D um, uh, simulation it has absolutely no effect on the uh, my carving it has no effect on uh, you know uh, you know the quality of my carving or anything like that uh, it, it has no effect on the way my board is going to be positioned it's just the way that the picture this image is uh, orientated now I could go through uh, and rotate these images, you know, open them up in a photo editing software and rotate them. I can also add new photos to this library. Uh, you know, I can find images and backgrounds, you know, uh, from my library and stuff. But I could rotate those images and, uh, you know, resave them. And when I do the simulation, it would simulate uh, that, um, you know, uh, Let's go over here and open up a simulation here. Uh, it would show, you know, whatever orientation that particular image is. So like my walnut uh, is um, running, you know, with the grain in the proper direction because that's how I orientated it because I use walnut a lot. And so therefore, um, that's why the grain's running opposite of the way I'm carving and the way I was just discussing which way my board's grain is going to run. But it has absolutely no effect whatsoever on anything. It's just for the simulation. The way the picture is orientated in the simulation. That was a great question. Um, any other questions uh, that uh, you guys have while uh, this um, model this uh, simulation is rendering. If you have any questions, uh, type them in. Uh, 
William, with this model, the rough and final cut profile cut and the V carve uh, text cut, do you Z, uh, do you still uh, set the Z axis? Do you still touch off the Z axis? Absolutely, uh, William. Uh, <clears throat> we are always referencing off the surface of our material because we set up the job to set the Z zero position from the top of the material. And therefore, because the middle of my book, you know, I'm starting in the middle here, it's getting milled away, right? As soon as I carve that rough cut, uh, that, that, that middle area is gone. So where do I touch off? Well, I touch off anywhere on the top surface of my board that has not been carved. So you do not, and that's another misconception, uh, that people have uh, misunderstanding is that you, they think that you have to touch your Z off where you zero out your X and Y, and that is not true. You can reference your Z zero off any portion of your board, the top surface of your board. So for me, after I do that rough cut, I would for the first you know touch off you know with my end mill doing that rough cut, I would touch off on the center. It's a flat board at that point. But once that rough cut is done, then when I change bits and change tool paths, um, I will be moving my router uh, over to an area of my board that has not been carved to touch and register that Z touch off uh, for the model finish cut, for the text uh, V carve cut, for the final profile cut, all of them. I would be moving my router to touch off on the original surface of the material, anywhere that has not been carved. Great question. Any other questions? We've got just a few more seconds here uh, before this is finished and we can move on to the banner and stuff, but uh, any other questions? Okay. Yeah, you're welcome, William. Uh, just yes, it, it's a it's a big misunderstanding that people think that they have to touch off where they zero out, and and that really that misunderstanding really makes it hard, especially if you're starting off one of the corners, the bottom left corner of your board. The center of that bit is literally half of the bit is off the wood, half the bit is on the wood. When the center of that bit is um, you know, zero it out on that bottom left corner. How would you get an accurate touch off in that position? How would you be able to hold that touch plate nice and flat in that position to get a nice accurate touch off of the Z? You wouldn't. So you would move that router from that start position somewhere on the board where you can get that touch plate nice and flat uh, to be able to touch off your Z. And that, you know, not only when you start off, but between tool changes as well. We're gonna, we have plenty of area here around the top, the side, and the bottom of this board. I can move that router anywhere that I want to to uh, touch off my Z axis. And so um, let's give this a little bit of color. Let's see what this would look like. Very nice. All right. Now, um, The uh, quality of the preview is much clearer, much less pixelation, so I can see how my carving is going to look. Now, let's say that I wanted a little bit more definition out of the letters. Just a little bit, tad bit, not much. Well, I can give it a little bit of a start depth other than zero. I can give it a little bit higher start depth uh, to make it carve in. Um, a 0.02, 20 thousandths of an inch is going to be too much. It's going to distort it a little bit too much. 10 thousandths, still a little much. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna kind of split the difference. I'm going to give it a start depth of um, 0 0.005. 5 thousandths of an inch. Doesn't seem like much, but that bit as it gets deeper, uh, it gets wider right so uh doesn't seem like much of a difference but uh it is so let's preview that 5000 start depth and uh 
you'll be able to see as as it carves down those letters you see the definition that we're getting now from just adding that little bit of a start depth um, much much more definition uh, in the cut so um, just keep that in mind if you you know if you got a shallow carving and you need you want a little bit more definition give yourself a little bit of a start depth I try not to exceed a 0 0.0625, you know, a 16th of an inch start depth, you know, when it comes to V carving all, because again, the deeper it goes, the wider you get. So usually I'm around uh, 0 0.005, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, you know, and I usually don't go beyond that too much. All right. So um, this would be our uh, cut. If we do our final profile cut, now, of course, I've recalculated. Oops, let's stop that one. <clears throat> Profile cut. Um, I've got my tabs in there now, so I won't be able to uh, remove the material uh, to show, but we'll go ahead and, and cut that uh, down uh, with our tabs, and we'll look at this uh, you know, with those six, seven, eight, eight tabs that I've got there. All right, so with that done, we look like this kind of straight on, and you can see those tabs along the bottom and all. But uh, yeah, this would be the uh, book model. It'd be a nice little, just something nice, I, you know, uh, to have on a shelf uh, of a kid's room or, uh, you know, next to the nightstand lamp or something. It's not something they're going to read. I mean, they would probably read it, but they would probably get sick of reading it over. And it's only one page. They can't turn the pages on this particular kind of book. But it's just something, uh, you know, nice. And it could be a, you know, uh, a centerpiece on a coffee table as uh, it could be a, like a Bible scripture. It could be a, a poem, you know, your favorite poems, a collection of your favorite poems, anything like that. All right. Now I said this was going to be an hour course, so I we are at an hour right now. Um, I just want to quickly, now that you've seen the steps in in detail, I want to quickly create a sampling of a, a ban. If I was doing a banner, so I'm going to move. Uh, these uh, objects here because I do want to carve this uh, book out. Uh, I'm going to move these to a layer two and I'm going to call this my book uh, text and border. And I do not want the layer visible. I want it invisible at the moment. So I can move it there. And that way I can come in and go back into my clip art tab. I'm going to grab a, from my ribbons and banners, I'm going to grab a uh, banner and let's, um, oh, let's grab, let's grab just a simple banner here. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to size up the banner. Oh, not that big. Size up the banner to what I want um, and uh, go into my uh, alignment tool and uh, get it centered up there on the center now remember what I said notice how you know right now uh, the highest part of this model is completely white right uh, so it's already hard enough to see uh, especially when it's deselected everything kind of fades out so remember what I said select your model right click and object properties and I can turn that fading down now for this particular model this area here along the top and bottom uh, that white area that's the absolute highest part uh, still a little bit uh, distorted as to where it is so I can actually go into my model uh, tab here and on that banner I can create that vector boundary around it to help me outline those edges and things okay all right so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, with my rectangle tool I'm going to go ahead and uh, create my rectangle and I may I'm going to do it over here as well uh, on these two sides I'd like you to see what this would look like if we were oops uh, distorting on these two sides here uh, might be like a banner with some initials or something over here but uh, for this, uh, we're going to go ahead and select, we'll start with our middle. Uh, we're going to draw text within a vector box. 
and um, I'm gonna make a banner I'm just gonna go um, my last name and uh, let's go with a let's see here let's go with a looking for something a little bit squarish mutter crowls Vermont. I uh, don't let those uh, bear with me a second uh, those have thin lines let's see here poor Richard nah, it's too thin I'm looking for something with a little bit uh, taller text um, yeah so we'll go with racing sands one uh, it could be a winning banner or something so I want this uh, centered in this box and I want no margins for this so I'm gonna click apply all right so we've got that and um, for my next object here uh, I'm going to put um, my what would I put there if this was a award-winning ribbon first first place maybe a trophy I'm not sure but we'll go uh, we'll go um, I'll use my initial W and again centered I'll use the same text in there and for this one uh, we'll go with my middle initial D there we go and everybody's going how the heck does he get w from laney where, where does that come from <laughs> i'll let you i'll let you stew on that one for a while all right so uh let's start with the middle text first we're going to select our boundary select our text um let's go ahead and zoom in so you guys can see this nice and clear and let's get it kind of centered up and let's go into our distort tool uh distort to the bounding box i'm going to click apply now I can edit the envelope and again on this line here I can either right click or just put my mouse on the line and hit the letter B to turn it into a Bezier curve. The left line same thing letter B for Bezier curve and the right line B as well as the bottom B. And that will allow me to curve and distort this text. So I'm going to bring this down. I really want to get really close to that edge there uh, and we're going to follow this curve up. Uh, I'm going to bring this one kind of down here and bring this anchor up to the lower part of that curve. Uh, this one, I want to bring the right corner, I'm going to bring it down to somewhere right about here and pull this up. Now as you pull these anchors further away from the nodes, the, that, that makes the arc more dramatic and things. And so I'm bringing the, this bottom right node, I'm bringing it closer and then kind of moving it upward. So I get more of that curve towards this area of the uh, design and, and things. Um, same thing here. I, I want the curve to be more uh, closer to this this curve here so I'm gonna bring that anchor on the left I'm gonna bring it closer to the node and um, pull up and let's see if we're coming around here and I need to bring this one up a little bit there we go just a nice even flow there uh, for the top I want to bring this uh, out and up maybe in a little bit and up and this one here same thing but I need to bring this down onto my banner would make sense if I did that right right so now I can start to really come close now the black line is my outline uh, the blue line is what I'm kind of pulling to create my shape and all. Okay. Um, 
<clears throat> so that that looks good. I will uh, maybe pull this down a little bit. Kind of get uh, down into here a bit. I want it to kind of almost look like it's wrapping along that curve a little. And let me pull this one down actually. I want to come down into that curve a bit. All right. Uh, this side looks, uh, let's get, I want to get it down into that curve a little bit. Oop, not that low. Not that high. Zoom in if you have to, you know, to get where you want. Uh, you know, get where you're trying to get. Get where you're trying to get. All right. So for uh, Shaughnessy, uh, because I moved my nose, I want to pull this back up. I want to get to as high or close to that black line on that uh, banner as possible. Really follow that curve. And there we go. All right. So now with that, um, I can go ahead and uh, select my object again I can bake that distortion bake it in there so uh, it's done close and now I can get rid of my vector boundary okay so Shaughnessy all right now for the W uh, once again we're gonna select the letter W and our border uh, go into distort in a bounding box apply so lock it in now we're in the edit envelope mode uh, transform object would be basically rotate mirror copy size you know all of that stuff you know we can you know move it where we want and stuff that's just like your transform tools well I want to edit the envelope meaning that I want to be able to distort these lines and again uh, I'll do it right click this time so right click busy a curve put my mouse on the line right click busy a curve right click busy a curve the letter B is the keyboard shortcut uh, and all so now I want this to be right up in to this curve and up here uh, I would love this to come down into this point a little bit and this one as well not too much not too much all right Ooh, not that much up here a bit all right, now I'm going to take my anchors and do some shaping. I want it, see this 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 banner here, um, it has a curl to it, right? So I want it to look like it's curling with that. So this arc here, uh, however I shape that arc, that's gonna help me with that curl, that curled look, um, you know, uh, here. And then as far as how it's distorting in this uh, flag and all, well, that's going to just basically be up to, you know, what I've got going on uh, with these anchors and stuff. So I'm going to pull this up. And now you can, it, you can almost, if you, if you visualize it in the 2D view, it's almost, you can almost see how it's got kind of that wrapping look like it's, it's curving and things. And that's what, you know, that's what we're going for. Um, is uh, to give it that wrap look. Now I don't want my W so close to this V right here so I may just pull my nodes up a little bit. Kind of uh, pull them up and kind of get them centered and uh, pull this arc out a little bit more. There we go. Awesome. Alright so with that uh, selected I can go ahead and bake that distortion and uh, close that tool I can get rid of my boundary so there's my W um, I'm actually gonna bump that over just a little bit not oop, not that way over this way there we go uh, there we go I want it to look like it's almost under the fold uh, last one uh, very quickly let's grab this and this 
Don't need a whole lot of explanation. It's rinse and repeat. Apply. Edit the envelope. Uh, I'm going to hit the letter B on my keyboard. B, B, all four lines. All right, let's grab this and put this here. Uh, this corner, we will go here. This corner is going to go up kind of under the fold a bit. And this one's going to go way up under the fold there um, because I'm going to be bringing that line around. All right. Follow that curve. Bring this in just a bit and get a little bit of a curve going on there so it looks like it's laying now this arc is a little bit different you know on this banner it's kind of almost like laying down in a sense um so i want that d to look like it's curving but i also want it to look like it's you know laying you know uh down Now it doesn't matter where you pull your envelopes and everything. It's just where you want the where I want the top of my letter, uh, you know, to be within this uh, and everything. So we're gonna go with that. All right, with that uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, get back into uh, node editing or envelope editing, should I say? And let's pull that out just a little bit. Okay. Uh, bake that distortion and close that tool. Get rid of my border. And now we're ready to create the tool path. So uh, once again, uh, I'm going to make sure on my modeling tool path that my book is turned off. So all that's working with is the model here. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm just for time's sake, I'm just going to create my 3D finish cut. Uh, 3D finish using the same uh, ball nose bit, um, my eighth inch tapered ball nose. I'm going to use the model as the boundary, use the model as the boundary, and I'm going to raster along that X axis. So this is going to be my banner model and calculate that. <clears throat> All right, let's reset our preview and let's preview that uh, banner cut. Again, this is going to be a, um, let's uh, for time's sake, let's stop this. Turn our simulation to standard and let's preview that uh, much faster. All right, so um, Thank you, Leanne, uh, for um, staying as long as you could, and thank you, Vern. Uh, what would the total carve time for the project be? Ford, I will show you that uh, total carve time. For the book project, uh, based on my speeds and feeds of my bit, the book rough finish the V and the profile cut, which let me put this where it's put, let me, uh, profile cut, my uh, carve time is four hours and four minutes. Four hours and four minutes uh, for that 12 by eight book. Okay, so uh, once again, let's go back into our preview here. Let's turn off those tool paths. And so we've got our, we've got our banner here. Uh, now we can go ahead and uh, for the text, Uh, let's do this the proper way select all of this and let's remember now uh, we're gonna do a, a V carve uh, for this but we are projecting zero start depth this is much wider letters right so uh, depending on how thick my model is let's see if I get a warning that my D or W are gonna cut through uh, let's calculate this this is going to be my banner text v carve calculate all right 
and uh, make sure did I project that uh, I did wonderful project that so we can preview that cut all right and um, the preview simulation remember I'm in a low simulation quality so now the final is going to be uh, creating that with that boundary that vector boundary around the banner uh, that's going to be our profile cut cutting three quarters of inch material uh, for this I can use my quarter inch end mill so I'm going to do that I'm going to be cutting on the outside of the line I will set a ramp for this a spiral ramp making sure that my tool plunge rate matches the feed rate way because of the fact that I'm using that spiral ramp and only because I'm using thank you Baron uh, only using that spiral ramp uh, would I would my plunge rate and my feed rate be the same and this is my banner profile cut and so we'll calculate that I'm not adding tabs to this so I can cut it out so we can see that banner in its entirety um, all right, let's uh, click this out. And so therefore we would have this banner. Now the D, a uh, little bit of funkiness going on there and that's gonna be simply uh, due to the fact that um, uh, I'm in a low simulation quality. My D would be much cleaner looking uh, right here, uh, that little distortion that you see on the D. But, you know, so this would be my, you know, banner for whatever, you know, whatever it's worth. Um, if I because it's a small project maybe if I go very high instead of extremely high uh, let's see if we do banner model next and profile preview those visible toolpaths and while we preview that visible toolpath let's go up and see what we've missed here um, what does the total carving out okay uh, Leanne had to leave thanks Ford okay uh, good evening, everyone. Trying to run my first job. Uh, welcome, Patrick Ball. How are you doing? Uh, everyone, this is uh, PG Ball 67 is Patrick Ball. Um, and um, he is uh, new. So please welcome him to the class, the group, the everything. All right. So much cleaner simulation quality. I do have a little bit of a distortion going on with that uh, D. I'd have to see what's going on with that particular cut. Let me... Uh, quickly uh, take a peek um, let me take a peek at my 2d view and let's look at that tenacious D I'm wondering wondering let's look at my model setup here aha that's there there's a problem my model was down in the middle of the board let's bring that up where it should be Let's bring that up where it should be. Uh, let's click OK. Uh, I do want to, no, I do not want to recalculate all of them, but I do want to recalculate my banner model. Recalculate that one. I do want to recalculate my text. And I do want to recalculate my profile. Now, that's a very important uh, thing that you notice there is I noticed something was off about my carving and it made me go back and just want to take a second look. Well, by doing that, taking a second look, it made me go back and look at my material setup. My material setup was correct for my book. But when I turned the model off for the book and brought the banner in, it completely changed that model position in the material. And I did not go back in to the material setup to make that adjustment. It had my model buried way down in my material. Uh, and I didn't go and make that adjustment before calculating the new tool path. So uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was a good thing that I did. So now we can... Uh, reset that preview and preview the visible toolpaths. And while that's previewing, let me look over here and see if um, anything else is going on. Okay, any questions, guys and girls? Any questions uh, regarding 
uh, distorting. The same principles would apply if I was working on a wavy flag. Uh, if I was, you know, the book covers, uh, you know, I, I created my own little curved model or something, or even in a 2D environment, it doesn't have to be on a 3D model. Even in a 2D environment, if I just want to distort my text, uh, you would follow those same type of principles, you know, just to give us something different. And so now if you look at my D much cleaner, uh, that, that anomaly is gone. Uh, from there and uh, therefore um, rectified by the incorrect it happened due to the incorrect model position within the material but was rectified by correcting that and notice here that my um, on my ribbon my my tool uh, what am I trying to say my radius of my router bit the tool marks that it's leaving I'd most likely clean these edges up uh, with um, by using a smaller ball nose end mill. All right, any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Because if not, we are going to uh, we're going to be ending. Um, and so I want you to uh, hopefully take something away from this particular class uh, to help you in, in the future. Um, Howard, I, the first part uh, in the book, this is all on three quarter inch material. This is all on three quarter inch material. And if I come back over to the book model, if I turn my banner model off and turn my book model on, uh, if I look at my material setup here, uh, my book model is a thickness of a little under five eighths of an inch thick. So it's carving out of three quarter inch material. So it's about 6.079 inches thick. So it's a three quarter inch material. Um, thank you, David. I appreciate that. All right, so uh, the, uh, once again, um, looking at everything, if uh, whether it be a ribbon, whether it be a book, a wavy flag, uh, whatever the case may be, if there was something that you wanted to distort along it, uh, check out the distort tool. Uh, don't forget to create your boundaries around whatever it is you want to distort and um, uh, go from there. Uh, and uh, uh, I believe these little tips uh, will help you in the future. I hope they will. Um, and uh, yes, Patrick, I'll give you a call after the class. Uh, good night, Peter. Good night, everyone. I want to thank you um, uh, for spending this evening with me, this, uh, this amount of time. And as always, until next time, uh, Wednesday, coming this Wednesday, uh, I will see you soon. Good night.